Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 2nd, 2018 edition of the Sands Earth Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remco came across an interesting bit of malware last week that he wrote up on Friday. The malware targets Mac OS users, which of course is interesting in itself in particular, since in this case, it doesn't appear to be one of the typical fake flash players that we see so often for OS X and Mac OS. The malware itself appears to be spreading on Slack and Discord channels that do deal with crypto and essentially people are trying to impersonate popular users in these channels or administrators in order to advertise their malware. What's also a little bit odd about this malware is that first of all, it's very large. It's 34 megabyte that needs to be downloaded. Also, Virus Total has no hits, at least at the time when Remco looked at this particular piece of malware. Now, there is a reason why this malware is so large. It's actually written in JavaScript, and then it uses a tool called Package that will take Node.js and the JavaScript and will combine that to an executable. So you have to carry around all that Node.js overhead. Sadly, we don't necessarily know what they were trying to accomplish here. The malware is then trying to connect to a server to download additional instructions. But as far as Remco could tell, uh, that server is no longer active. And since it connects it directly by IP address, it's not looking up a host name. So unlikely that this will just come back again. But overall, interesting way to write malware and distribute it. So if you run anything like this, uh, then uh, please forward us a sample. Currently, most cell phones and most cell phone towers operate with LTE. Now, LTE provides additional security mechanisms in order to authenticate the tower the user is connecting to, which made it more difficult to launch some attacks that were common against 3G and edge. Now, there's of course always the possibility to force a downgrade, but we do now have a number of new attacks that allow some attacks against LTE itself using layer two deficiencies of the protocol. First of all, the authentication with the tower is really done on the data layer, not on layer two on the LTE layer, which means that you can still inject an unauthorized tower. Now, this tower cannot necessarily decrypt the data. However, just looking at packet sizes, the amount of data being transmitted, it may still be possible to identify, for example, websites a user visits. Now, this is a common technique that has also been used against HTTPS. In HTTPS, of course, usually the host name is sent in the clear. In so far, it's not really all that necessary to do it. But just doing this kind of traffic analysis, uh, yes, that works against HTTPS as well. And of course, that works against LTE. In their experiments, they got about a 90% accuracy when looking at the top 50 websites, which of course may not be really all that interesting because everybody goes to the top 50 websites and they were still not necessarily able to see what you did on those websites. However, where it gets a little bit more interesting is where you're actually modifying the data. And that's really sort of, I think, the real deficiency here with LTE. LTE encrypts the data, but does not necessarily protect the integrity of the data. Now, if you know the plain text of a packet and they took as an example DNS, you're still able to modify the data and you may then be able to, for example, redirect DNS queries to a server the attacker controls. And with that, of course, you then open yourself up to all kinds of DNS spoofing attacks. Now, these researchers used open source software in order to accomplish these attacks, but they used an isolated lab network. And they say in the summary about their paper that a real world attack will be quite a little more complex and less likely to succeed just because of all the other ambiguities that you have when you're dealing with real world wireless networks. 
So I don't think you should worry about this too much at this point, uh, but it's probably a good idea, no matter whether you worry about these attacks or not, to use a VPN whenever you connect from an untrusted network. And then we have a new exploit taking advantage of the Rowhammer attack. And in this case, the exploit is particularly targeting Android devices. Rowhammer is this attack against modern DRAM versions that allows an attacker to flip essentially and read unrelated bits of memory just by quickly flipping bits of memory that the attacker has access to. So this new exploit adapts this particular technique for Android. Now the researcher that came up with it also developed a countermeasure that essentially isolates these different memory areas better so they cannot affect each other using these physical imperfections of DRAM memory. The defensive technique they're calling Guard Ion, based on the name of the subsystem in Android, it actually is responsible for this memory management. Not sure why they decided to pick a new name for the attack because it's really just a raw hammer. It's not a new vulnerability, really just a new exploit for raw hammer. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.